We have decided uh, to investigate the relationship between temperature and the rate of chemical reaction. So let's see how that goes. Uh, in 5.1, the question is saying, let's define the term rate of reaction. That is the change in concentration of product or reactants per unit time. The change in concentration of products or reactant per unit time. And then uh, first point two, state two conditions that must be kept constant during this investigation. So we're investigating the relationship between temperature and the rate of a chemical reaction, right? It means that all the other factors that affect the rate of a reaction must be kept constant. In our chemical reaction, we have MgCO3 in solid form, and then we have HCl as a solution, right? So the conditions that we must keep uh, constant here is the concentration, right? We need the concentration uh, of HCl to be kept the same so that it doesn't fear with our rate of reaction. And another thing, we need to keep uh, the surface area, we need to keep the surface area uh, the same, the surface area of MgCO3, we need to keep it the same so that it doesn't affect our rate of reaction. All right, and then now, uh, 5.3, so with regards to conditions that you must keep the same, you just don't randomly see all the other factors that affect the rate of a reaction. No, you have to look at the chemical equation you have and uh, talk about conditions that are in relation to that. If we had a guess, I would be talking about the pressure or the volume, right? But then we have a solid, so that's why I'm talking about uh, the surface area, and then we have a uh, solution, that's why I'm talking about concentration right uh, 5.3 in 5.3 this the question is saying that uh, let's use the collision theory to explain the relationship shown in the graph so let's look at our graph and see what is happening on the x-axis we have the temperature right it's easy to see and then on the y-axis we have the average rate of production of CO2 in grams per minute. And we can see clearly that as the temperature increases, uh, the average rate also increases, which makes sense, right, according to collision theory. So how can you explain that? We know fully well that if you increase the temperature, the average kinetic energy of the particles of the molecules will increase, right? And then if we have that increase, then more molecules will have a kinetic energy that it is equal to or greater than the activation energy, more successful collisions per unit time, and consequently, the rate of reaction increases. So that is the answer of 5.3 based on uh, collision uh, theory, right? Uh, you can see here from this document that uh, when we have high temperature, the kinetic energy of particles increases. And then if the kinetic energy of particles increases, more molecules have enough or sufficient kinetic energy, uh, kinetic energy that is equal to or higher than the activation energy, and then more effective collisions per unit time, right? Yeah, we're not just pulling it out of nowhere. It's actually, you know, based on uh, the collision theory. Right, let's go back to uh, 5.4 now that we have than 5.3. So 5.4 is saying that uh, the learners obtain the graph above using 5 grams of MgCO3 with excess hydrochloric acid at 40 degrees Celsius. And then the first question, 5.4.1, let's find the time taken for the reaction to run to completion. Right. So let's look at the information we have so that we can see uh, what we can do, right? So we're interested at 40 degrees Celsius. So let's go to our graph. Let me just uh, do this real quick. Right. Everything is fine now. So at 40 degrees Celsius, let's just go up. Uh, this is our rate of reaction at 40 degrees Celsius. Our rate of reaction is 0 0.5 grams per minute. So at, at 40 degrees celsius right we have a rate of reaction which is equals to 0 0.5 grams per 
minute right and then what are we looking for we're looking for the time we're looking for delta t so let's do some analysis here our rate of a reaction is in grams per minute right so if we find the mass of co2 formed we're going to be able to find delta t right but then how can we find uh, the mass of co2 formed we are given uh, the mass of mg co3 from this mass we can find the number of moles of mg co3 right without a doubt and then from the number of moles of mg co3 uh, if we use uh, the molar ratios we're gonna be able to find the number of moles of co2 uh, that were formed right and then from the number of moles of co2 we can consequently find the mass of co2 formed and then from that mass we are then going to substitute into uh, the equation for the rate of a reaction and we're gonna find our time so let's go ahead and do that so uh, we have the mass of mgco3 and now we need to find uh, the number of moles of mgco3 so if we do that we're going to get uh, the number of moles being equal to the mass divided by the molar mass so what is the mass uh, it's given to us as five grams so now what we need is essentially uh, the molar mass of mgco3 and that is supposed to be somewhere around uh, 84 right and then if you put that in your calculator you should get 0 0.06 moles so now we have uh, the number of moles of mgco3 let's use um, the mole ratio to find the number of moles of co2 right so we can say that the number of moles of co2 divided by the number of moles of mg co3 is equal to the ratio of the balancing coefficients right so let's go to our equation so the balancing coefficient here is one and the balancing coefficient of co2 is also one so we're gonna have one divided by one so basically the number of moles of co2 is equal to the number of moles of mg co3 which is just 0 0.06 uh, moles so now that we have the number of moles we can find uh, the mass right if we do that we're going to say that uh, the uh, mass is equal to the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass uh, the number of moles uh, that is 0 0.06 and then the molar mass of co2 now we're looking for the molar mass of co2 right uh, that is supposed to be 44 and then if you put that in your calculator you should get 2.64 grams right and then now back to our equation uh, rate of reaction so now we're gonna have the change in mass divided by the change in time right so is it the change in mass is it the change in concentration is it the change in the number of moles is it the change in volume it depends on what you are given right is this the equation that is going to decide uh which unit to use for the rate of reaction so we have uh, 0 0.5 which is equal to 2.64 divided by the time right uh, it is quite easy to see that uh, we're gonna have 5.28 uh, minutes as our time